Hello everybody. I am um, going to do a short practice today, probably about 30 minutes or so. I'm doing my darndest to keep up with uh, videos and uh, interaction on the Patreon. Um, and um, yeah, I'm kind of, it's summertime and I mean, I don't know what time of year you're watching this video, but right now here it's summertime and um, because the sun's out, I have more energy and I'm noticing that uh, using my body a lot more. And so I'm, I'm dealing with some pain um, and some injuries that are trying to come back, uh, specifically tennis elbow. Um, and it's just because I'm pushing the limits, the boundaries of my body. I, I tend to do that a lot, so I have to watch it. So with that being said, I... Today's class is based on a mantra for healing. Um, this is a great book. It's called My Pocket Mantras. If it's just a good way to focus the intent of your practice. And today uh, is going to be uh, slower, more breathing. And um, yeah, so um, the mantra is my body contains divine wisdom to heal itself. And um, I think that we start to get away from the trust that we have in our own intuition because we rely on doctors um, and all these people in the medical field, um, psychologists in, in that realm, um, nutritionalists, chiropractors, you know, list whoever you want to. And I'm not saying that their jobs are not valid because they are. They help a lot of people. But it's important to be an educated consumer and really think about what's happening in your whole body, your whole life, your environment, what you're, what you're fueling your body with because all those things play a role and that helps us to become more intuitive. Um, now, if you want to rely on somebody else telling you how to live your life and what to eat and all these things, then that's fine. But everybody's different. Everybody's um, biological makeup is different. And um, not everything works for, not all the same things work for the same people. And that's partly why I talk about like chiropractors and stuff like that. Because sometimes people get into this pattern of just, oh, this is it, and I'm treating the same people with the same stuff, and that's not the case. So just just become more intuitive about what's happening in your body. Look at what you're eating. Look at the environments that you're around and see how those things affect your body. Um, my body contains the divine wisdom to heal itself. So what we're going to do is um, I'm going to sit, and I'll tell you how and when to recite this. So recite this mantra 11 times, either out loud or quietly to yourself to really feel the words. You can also practice saying this mantra with your eyes closed and your hands over your heart or in prayer position. If you're currently taking any medications, you can also recite this mantra as you take them as a way of supporting their effect on your body. How this mantra can help you. Your body is an incredible source of knowledge and wisdom. When you cut yourself, your body knows exactly what to do to heal the wound. When you catch a cold or your body has, uh, your body has the tools it needs to fight uh, it off. Yet it is easy to forget that all of this divine wisdom is living inside of you at all the, all the time because you don't have to think about it for the healing to happen. Taking a moment to reflect on this can be truly empowering and can remind you that your body is extremely intelligent, powerful, and even magical. Reciting this mantra will help you put faith and trust back into the healing ability, into healing abilities of your body. This in turn can help you feel more empowered on your healing journey and can put you in a more positive frame of mind whenever disease or illness comes your way. This mantra also allows you to trust yourself and your body's own ability to heal. Use this mantra as a part of your healing process to help support and embrace all of the other efforts and medical interventions. Yeah, so let's do that. Find um, a good position to sit in. I'm sitting on a bolster. My hands are open because I'm inviting divine wisdom 
and being open to the flow of source through my body. And I know sometimes it can be hard to remember how many times. So what I'll do is every time I recite it, I'll just kind of go down my fingers and that way I'll know where I'm at. Take a nice deep breath in. Exhaling out. Inhaling. And exhaling. Just doing that a couple of times to settle into our bodies. And I will repeat out loud and you can just follow along with me or you can also repeat it out loud. You choose the way you want to, to do your mantra. My divine, my body contains divine wisdom to heal itself. 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 My body does contain divine wisdom to heal itself. My body contains divine wisdom to heal itself. My body contain, contains divine wisdom to heal itself. My body 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 contains divine wisdom to heal itself. Taking a few more breaths. Really trusting and believing. Believe that knowledge, believe that wisdom, believe that intuition. Open your eyes. And I have a bolster with me today. I'm gonna to start our practice. You can use it or not use it. It's helpful when you're trying to do a more restorative session. Adjust this just a bit. There you go. So we're actually gonna start on the floor today on your hands and knees. So I don't have a mat because I have a padded floor but you're gonna be in tabletop and you're just gonna move forward and back, moving your hips forward and back, just kind of opening up the body. Tapping into your breath. Continue to do that. I'm gonna fix this microphone real quick. Take it all the way down into extended child's pose.
pushing the heels back. Forehead down. Lifting up and you're just gonna follow through all the way, bringing the knees forward, taking upward dog so flat wrists I mean flat hands and then lifting the head up so you're pushing your hips forward then you're gonna roll your shoulders back oh nice big stretch release the glutes and you're just gonna look over your shoulders so a very nice neck stretch while we're in a position. Taking it all the way back into that child's pose. Lifting up, flipping the toes. Now we're taking down dog. Hips are high, hands are further than your head. Pushing your heels back, releasing the head and neck. We're going to stay here for about five breaths. And it's okay if your heels are not all the way back. We're working towards that, but it is a nice stretch on the back of the, um, on the calves. Take a breath, release the neck away from the shoulders. Start to walk. Actually, you know what? Take a couple more breaths there. My brain is trying to move me too fast today, guys. So bear with me. Trying to slow it down. Walk the feet forward and then we'll be in forward fold. So you're releasing everything down. Try to keep your knees straight. If your hamstrings are tight, it might be hard to straighten your knees all the way, but it's okay to have them a little bit of a bend. We're always working towards becoming more flexible. Roll it all the way up, bringing the arms up above. Spread your feet apart a little bit. And then we're gonna lift up as high as we can. Oh. We're gonna take another forward fold. So all the way down between your legs, placing the hands down, stretching out the backs of your legs. Again, releasing the head, the neck, and the shoulders. <sighs> Wiggle your head if you need to. And then all the way back up. This time bringing the arms out. So you're going to press the chest forward. I'll show you from sideways. So you're standing up, pushing the chest open. And then you can even drop your hands back behind you. Lift the chin. And lift the hands or try to keep the hands back behind you. And coming back to neutral, we're going to go down onto our knees. Lifting the arms up. 
interlacing the fingers, turning the palms up. Like whenever I move this microphone is going to be in the way. So you're trying to push your palms up towards the ceiling, keeping your body nice and tall. Head is in between the arms. Release the hands, and so you'll go down onto your knees again. I'll show you from the front view what we're gonna do. So you kind of take your hands, walk them all the way over to the left. So pressing the palms into the floor, you're gonna take your your butt down, trying to press your hands into the floor. So you're stretching under the arms. into that space underneath the arm and up towards the side of the shoulder blade. This is where I see a lot of people having issues with tightness or injuries, overworked muscles and tendons, especially if you hold stress. All we do is come up Take the arms over to the right, same thing. So you're pressing the palms into the floor and then bringing your body down. So it's getting, getting that stretch. Taking a breath. back onto just your feet. So you're gonna sit on top of your feet. If this hurts, you can sit Indian style. But we're gonna roll the shoulders back. And as you roll like the hands back, right, that comes open and then you're gonna round your head and shoulders and press your upper back. So you're getting that good flex on the upper back. Don't be afraid to make adjustments for your body. So if you want to roll your neck or move your head forward and back, do that. I hear all kinds of clicking and popping. All right, so we're still sitting on the feet. Now we're going to take and drop the right hand down. Left arm's going to come up and you're going to try to keep your body nice and tall. Reach, reach, reach that hand over. Again, stretching out the side body so you can incorporate the hip here as well. Gravity likes to pull all of our body down and compress discs, but also compress tissue in our body. And so when you're feeling that release on the stress, you're feeling the, the breaking up of that connective tissue. And it feels pretty awesome sometimes. And sometimes it can be a little bit painful or sore. Let's go to the other side. So if you have scar tissue in there and you're trying to stretch an area that is had has that scar tissue in there, you're gonna feel that. So, trying to break itself up or release from it. All right. Now, the next one, you can choose a couple different options. We're going to do pigeon, but you can also choose to do deer pose, which is kind of taking the, the leg out to the side. 
and then keeping the other leg bent in front. We're going to start with the left leg forward and then you can choose to use the bolster or not. It's up to you. I'm going to use the bolster. Um, and then so you can also do full pigeon here, taking the leg all the way back. So what we're going to do first is kind of sit up and this is, a, this is a small adjustment. So if you're in this deer pose, you're going to kind of hold your front leg and sit up nice and tall. Think about the area right here in the hip. Take a breath and try to release it. It's natural to want to clench this area up. Same thing for pigeon. So if you're, you're lifting here, take a breath, try to release the hip down. That's what's getting into that psoas and the hip flexors. And then you can release all the way down. Remembering to take some nice deep inhales and exhales. This feels so good. I don't want to come out of it, but I know your videos. I don't want your video go, going too long. All right, so let's switch other side, right side. Same thing. We're going to start up high. It actually kind of felt good switching in between these two. So if you like that option, you might want to try that. Remember to sit up nice and tall first, releasing the hip. So that means moving awareness to that space. Taking a breath and let it magically doing the work of letting go. I should have said the movement part of this is going to be 30 minutes. I'm going to switch into that full pigeon. Lifting up first. Oof, this is definitely my tight side. Whenever you're ready, you can take it all the way down. One more breath here. You might notice the longer you stay in a position, the, the, the better you're releasing into it. Let's gently come out of this. Ooh. This next one I really like a lot. Um, and it's an area that also gets neglected. So you will probably want to use your bolster. Um, you don't have to, but it's up to you. What we're gonna do is kind of take your legs out 
Ooh, see, I even adjusted theirs. It's almost like you got frog legs. I uh, wish I could get the camera to do a little bit better angle. Okay, and so what you're gonna do is place your arms onto the bolster and then kind of rock forward and back, finding the area that feels best for you, the tightest. And then you'll take a breath and sink into that. Be very careful coming out of this one. Use your toes to bring yourself up. And then we'll take the bolster. This is one of my favorite ones behind you, right at your hips. You're gonna butterfly your feet, lay all the way back. Let your arms fall off. And just take a couple of breaths. Letting everything fall backwards. Maybe take a second to bring yourself to your heart space and ask yourself, do you trust your judgment when it comes to your health or do you depend on others to kind of tell you what you have like maybe labeling dis-ease in the body or disease a lot of our issues stem from inflammation um, and in recent studies they are noticing that inflammation and over amount, an, um, an excessive amount of inflammation uh, is causing more and more dis-ease in the body. And if we can keep that inflammation down on a normal level, which means inflammation is necessary for healing. We need it, but it's just for when you're hurt or you're trying to fight off something. It's not to always have happening in your body because just like you don't want to be in fight or flight, you don't want your body to always be inflamed because then it's, it's causing your body to have to work harder and neglect other areas, other organs or processes. And, um, yeah, it's not good. It leads to autoimmune disorders, all kinds of crazy stuff, Alzheimer's. So do you trust in yourself when it comes to your, your health? And if you don't, why? Maybe you should spend some more time paying attention to what you're putting into your body and doing physically with your body and mentally, whatever you're taking in. Take a nice deep breath. Exhale it out, bring the knees together. We're just gonna roll off the bolster and just move it out of the way. Lay all the way back. Oh. Just rock the knees from side to side. Oh. This is a very soothing movement to do. So 
So you'll notice I do a lot of the same poses and movements. Um, first of all, I'm trying to get you guys used to remembering what these things look like so you can do them on your own, whether you're watching a video or if you're just, you don't have access to your video and you need a stretch. Um, but I also want you to know, like, as a part of you growing your intuition or connecting back with your intuition, what, which parts of your body that you need to work on and which stretches are good for those. All right, we're just going to switch bringing legs up so you can just grab anywhere in the back of your leg and then take the, the other leg flat down, just kind of stretching out the backs. Bring your feet all the way down. And then we're just gonna butterfly them out again. Place your hands on your belly and we're gonna take a few breaths as we take this class. Out, just trying to center and ground ourselves. So we can kind of go back into our world balanced and grounded, breathing in through the nose, out through the mouth. Start to bring yourself out of this and I want you to really, as you move forward in your day and your life, to trust that you have the divine wisdom to heal yourself, that you know what's best for you. To heal your body, to balance your life. You got this. Bring your legs together, roll over. Oh, come back up into Indian style. Take one final breath in and out. Namaste.